Hi everybody, Richard Ham here. Today we're going to be talking about Le Havre, um, which according to Board Game Geek is the seventh best board game in the world, in the history of the world. Number seven. Um, now whether you find that to be true or not, uh, the fact remains it is an excellent game. Um, very big, very heavy, very thinky. And um, what better way to start the new year, Happy New Year everybody, than with a brand new uh, board game walkthrough. So let's just get right to it. Now in this game, players are um, running like uh, big successful shipping magnates, uh, collecting goods, building buildings, and shipping uh, stuff off to foreign lands for big, big profits and points. Hmm. Excuse me, sorry about that. And uh, it, you know, the the mechanics of the game are really incredibly simple. It's probably the most amazing thing about this game is just with these really simple moves, really simple rules. I mean, the the rules booklet is incredibly thin. Um, you get this really rich uh, game simulation. So let's actually talk about how we start out. Um, I, uh, each player, starts out with a coal. Let's look a bit closer. Uh, this is a lot of these chits in the game. Um, a coal. This gives me three energy, and it's worth is that th uh, three? Yeah, three francs. If I ever ship this off to foreign lands, I'll get three francs for it. But the main purpose of coal is to burn for energy, which you'll need for various and sundry buildings. I also start out with five francs and one worker. Um, throughout the course of the game, you will only ever have one worker. And how you use this worker um, you know, will sink or swim you. Also, um, I am the starting player. Jen, meanwhile, she starts with the, pretty much the same stuff. Uh, there's also, at the beginning of the game, three buildings that belong to the town of La Habra um, that we can use, that we can put our uh, workers in to do work. And they are a building firm, a building firm that's uh, slightly not as good, and a construction firm. But let's not worry about that. Let's just actually start playing, shall we? Um, let's see. Here we are at the far left side of the, uh, I don't know, the harbor. Um, and I'm going to go first because I've got the first player marker. And so I take my little uh, ship and I jump here. And I flip this guy over and I reveal, uh, if you can see it, one wood and one clay. And what that means is, I uh, go here, I add one wood to the wood dock, or wood offer as it's called, and one clay to the clay offer. Before we go any farther, I should mention, um, you'll notice all these little chits we've got in these little uh, plastic dishes. These were awesome. We found them for nothing at a dollar store, a big old collection of them. So um, these just make the game so easy to set up and keep um, nice and tight. You can imagine without these, uh, these chits would be spilling all over the place. And you have to be really redoubly reference to keep them in nice little stacks. I mean, look at, you know, the money's already spilling all over the place. Imagine all these chits. If you're going to get this game, I definitely recommend looking um, for dollar stores or Kmarts or wherever you can to find something, some sort of dishes to keep all your stuff in. Um, anyway, though, that's an aside. Uh, my move, I, I came over here, I flipped it, and I revealed that I had to put one wood and one uh, clay out onto the docks. Now, if we actually look at the uh, turn overview card that it comes with, that was the supply phase. Very easy. You move forward and you do whatever the thing you landed on says. Now we do the main action and you only get one action per turn. And there's only two things you can choose from. You can take all goods or money from an offer space, you know, one of these docks out here, or you can move your worker, you know, this little guy, you can move your worker um, to a new building. Um, you know, to, to yeah, move your, or, 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 like, for example, to build new buildings and whatnot. So that's my choice. I am either going to take stuff off of one of these docks, or I'm going to put my worker currently on these are the only buildings I could put them on, these ones that let me build stuff. I'm going to go on ahead and grab some stuff. I'm going to grab this wood because there's three wood right here. Woohoo! And I'm already off to the races collecting wood. Um, insert Carcassonne jokes here about wood. Alrighty, that was the end of my turn. It is now um, Jen's turn. She's going to go on ahead and she hopscops, or you know, leapfrogs me. And that happens always. You know, I'm going to land here next. So anyway, she hopscotched, landed here where we reveal the fish grain tile. So that means we put out a grain on the grain um, dock and another fish onto the fish dock. Another thing that's really great about this game is it makes it so easy to set up. There's all these markers on the board that remind you what you have to do. Like um, under here, there's like uh, specifics about how to set up. Really well done. Uh, you really would expect more games to do something like this. But anyway, nicely done. Um, so anyway, Jen landed. She put out a grain of fish and now she has a choice. Does she want to grab some stuff off the dock or use a worker? She is going to, um, what's she going to do? She's going to grab the clay. Uh, so now she's got, I grab the wood, she grabbed the clay. We both grabbed some building materials. Now I should have mentioned there's some more stuff you can do on a turn. You have your main action of either grab stuff off a dock or move your worker onto a building. Um, Jen's, this turn, she's done her main action, grab all the stuff. You also get these additional actions. You can buy buildings, 
sell buildings, or if you have any loans, repay them. Jen is going to buy a building right now. Um, so let's take a look at the buildings. Uh, now, like I said, she's, we both start with five bucks. She's going to spend four of it, which means she gets you know one buck and change. And she is going to buy this building from over here, which costs four dollars to build. Um, and so she takes this, puts it over in her space, and this is now her building. She owns this, and at the end of the game, she will get four victory points for owning this building. Um, well done. Now uh, that was her whole turn because she her main thing was grabbing the clay. And then she did a bonus thing of uh, buying. Now, back to me, my turn. Hopscotch again. Whoop. Flip the thing. It's a clay fish. So a fish comes out. And a clay comes out. And now, um, my turn again. I could go on ahead. I could grab this fish. I could grab this money. I could grab, uh, there's only one clay now or this one grain. But I'm going to use, I'm going to be, I'm going to use my workers now. I'm going to put him on a building and do that building's action. So I can put him on you know, this building firm or this construction firm, or I can put my worker on Jen's building firm. Because you can, you can put your worker on any building that's been built. doesn't matter who owns it. Um, now, I'm going to put it on Jen's, and there's a reason for that. You come back over here and look at these ones in town. Um, I can put it on this building firm where I would build one building. Um, which lets me choose one of these buildings up here to build. But up here in the top right, there's an indicator of how much it cost me. It would cost me one food to actually use this building. If I wanted to use the construction firm, which lets you build two buildings at once if you want, if I wanted to build this place, I would have to spend two food. Now, I don't want to spend anything on it. So if I come over to the one Jen just bought, there's nothing. It doesn't cost anything to use this. So I will use her building, but it won't cost me. Now, I, mean, I won't have to pay her for it. So I'm going to build, um, build one building. And what that means is I come up here and look at the buildings that can be built. There's actually, in every single time you ever play Lahav, all these buildings, one, two, three, four, five, all these 15 buildings will come out. But there's kind of this uh, clever little subtle randomization thing that happens where at the beginning of the game when you're setting up, you, um, you randomize them into three piles, sort them by order, and then flay them out or splay them out like this. So every time the order of... Uh, that these um, cards or these buildings come become available is different, and that can be a very subtle difference. Sometimes it can make a major difference. Like in this game, we really care a lot about when this wharf is going to come out because that means we can start building ships, which is hugely important. Currently, it's the third in the stack. We've seen games where the wharf is out right at the beginning, and it's like a mad dash to start building ships, or we've seen it like it's really way down low. So the game can play differently depending on how this stack um, comes out. And in this game, the top ones to choose from are a marketplace which costs two wood to build, a smokehouse, which costs two wood and one clay, and a bakehouse, which costs two clay. Now, I'm going to, I see, I've used the building firm, I've placed my worker on it, uh, which means I build, I'm going to build the marketplace, which costs two wood. And that comes back in. And now, having built the marketplace, I have exposed the fishery, which costs one wood and one clay, so that's available to build uh, in a future turn. So I've got this marketplace. I have successfully built it, I've used my worker. Now, um, I can still, as you recall, I can uh, buy stuff, I could sell stuff, uh, I can repay loans. I've got five bucks. There is not a single building I can afford to buy. This costs six, eight, ten, six, eight. So I'm pretty much done. I can't buy anything right now. That was my whole turn. Moving on to Jen. She hops, hops, skips, and jumps up to here where she will give up, she will put one food and one franc on the docks. I'm sorry, not one food, one wood. One wood and one franc. And now it's her turn. What is she going to do? Um, let's see. Now, uh, she's only got one buck, so she can't buy anything really. She's got her worker, so she could uh, put her worker, she could actually, remember, because she grabbed two clay, so she could actually afford to build this bakehouse if she wanted right now. Um, is she going to do that? Yeah, she's going to go ahead and, and now, here's the tricky thing. She would like to use her own building, but it's occupied. Um, because I'm here, she cannot come here, which means she can't even use her own building. She has to come to the town building and use this one, um, which lets her build a building, but unfortunately costs her a food. So I've just, by using her building, I've cost her a food. Now, she doesn't have any food. She's got coal and clay. But in this game, at any time you want or need, you can switch one for one money into food. It doesn't go the other way. You can never turn food into money, but you can turn money into food. So she's going to turn this into food and then give it to the town to use this building firm. And what's she going to build? She's going to build this bakehouse, which requires two clay, which is the first thing she picked up. So we're on our way. So she's built two things, and all she's got left is coal. However, she has got um, 12 points now. Um, 8 plus 4 is 12 points. Me, 
I've got six plus five, because every, every Frank is worth a point at the end of the game. I've got 11 points, Jan's got 12 points. Um, and uh, I've got an extra piece of wood, and so on and so forth. I mean, uh, it's too early to say who's winning, obviously, but you just, um, you know, these are the kind of things you have to bear in mind, because every uh, decision is very important. Anyway, that was the end of Jan's turn. My turn, I jump up, and it's an iron and a, another Frank that comes out. And so I got to decide, do I want to grab something off the docks, or do I want to move my worker someplace else? Now, I could move my worker to her bakehouse, um, but unfortunately, I have no grain, so I can't do anything with that, so I'm not going to bother. Uh, let's see, I, uh, I could, no, I don't, actually, I don't have enough resources to build anything. I could come to my own marketplace, which wouldn't be bad, but I think actually, um, here's the thing. You'll notice um, we are now almost made it to the end of the first year um, by going through all these spaces. When we make it to the end of the first year, we come to harvest time, for lack of a better term, since it says right there, where we have to pay food to our workers and potentially harvest stuff. We're in a two-player game um, instead of a three, four, or five. We're in a two-player game. We're in round one. At the end of round one, or year one, or whatever you want to call it, we will have to pay three food or suffer the consequences. I don't want to suffer the consequences right now. Um, but the, you know, I've got this turn and one more turn before I have to pay three food, um, which I could pay out of my money, but I want to hold on to my money because I want to buy stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to snag these fish. So now my food needs are covered for the first year because I just got four fish. Moving on to Jen, this is her last turn of this year because then you'll see I'll hopscotch to this space. So, uh, on our last turn, a uh, wood and a cattle comes out. Another wood, another cattle. And now she's got to decide with her last turn, um, is she, how is she going to deal with the need of this food? Now, I grabbed all the fish, so there's no fish. However, she can grab all four of these bucks, which isn't bad because, again, uh, you can always convert money to food. So she um, could get her food needs covered right here. However, she's not going to do that. She's going to intentionally starve herself. And I'll tell you why in a minute. In the meantime, um, the action she's going to do is, of everything that's on the docks, she's going to take a grain. The only grain, um, you know, even though she could get the food and, and cover herself, she's going to grab grain. Um, and that was her whole turn. And now we move on to me. My last turn. Flip this over. And it's uh, wood and fish. Fish comes out. A wood comes out. And um, you'll also notice it pointed out interest. If we had any loans at this point, right now, we would have to pay interest on them. Um, but neither of us have any loans at this point, obviously. So last turn of the year, what am I going to do? I've got my fish, I've got my food covered, covered need, uh, my, my food's need covered. Um, let's see, I could go to a big house, but I still have no grain. Um, let's see, I've only got a wood and a coal, which means I don't have the resources to be able to build anything. So um, I guess, I guess... Hey, three wood is, but you know what? I'm just going to grab more wood. You can never have too much wood, can you? Um, so I'm just going to grab three more wood. And that was my last turn. And now the year is over. Jen does not get, Jen got three turns this year and I got four. Um, and the year's over. So we have now hit the line. So um, at the end of year one, we have to pay three food. Let's do me first. Do, do, do. Yummy, yummy, yummy fish. I'm covered. No problem. Jen, dun, dun, dun. dun. Um, now, she can't eat her grain um, because it's a bit too crunchy. So this is not food. She can't eat her coal. She has no money. So what she has to do now, she has to take a loan. So we come over here to the loan pile, and Jen has grabbed her first loan. Every loan you take is worth four bucks, so she, or francs. She's got four francs. One, two, three. And three of these four francs gets, um, you know, goes right back in to pay for her food needs, um, bah, 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 which leaves her with one food left over. Now, uh, this loan, she could carry for the entire game. Every year, you remember, up here is when we get here, she's going to have to start paying interest. She'll always have to pay one, um, what, what do you call it, one interest, uh, or one franc in interest on her loan. No matter how many loans she has, she only ever has to pay one. So this is an odd game where you are actively encouraged to build up a bunch of loans um, because... By, um, taking a, by taking a loan and not actually grabbing fish, Jen basically got one extra turn this year to get an important resource. And what was that resource she got? She got grain. And um, why is that important? Because at the end of the every year, after you have um, fed your people, you then have a harvest. And for everybody who has one grain, they basically grow another. So Jen just got a grain for free. 
Um, and if you happen to have two cattle, you know, they breed and you can grow a, um, a cow as well. Neither of us, because there's only one cattle that came out in the first year. So nobody had any cattle to breed. But Jen basically, um, you know, used an action to get a grain and then she harvested. And that is the end of the first year. We then flip this up. And you would now notice there is a wooden ship in the game that we could either buy, it costs $14 to buy, or we can make with um, four wood and some energy. But to be able to make it, we need to pay, place our worker on the wharf, which is where we send our workers to build ships. So, um, you know, it's a multi-step process to actually build a ship, but this is the first ship in the game. And the nice thing about this wooden ship, there's a couple nice things. You will notice um, that in a two-player game, it provides you four food at the end of every year. So ships are hugely important to keep your people fed without having to go into debt. Sh uh, a ship also lets you ship goods, which is a great way later in the game to earn victory points. But we've shown a year, so um, we are now on to round number two. Where at the end of the year we'll have to um, do four food, and at the end of the year the city will automatically build one of these buildings. We come back over, reset these guys, and now in round two of a two-player game, Jen is the first player. Player number two goes first. So Jen lands here. Um, you know these don't get reshuffled, uh, and they stay the rest of the way. So uh, the way they are for the rest of the game, and she has a food and a clay. So a new food and a new clay comes out, and Jen must once again decide. Is she going to place her worker somewhere? Like, for instance, she could send it over to this bakehouse and uh, maybe start turning this um, grain that she's got into bread and make some money. She could do that. She could um, pick up some more stuff. She could pick up four bucks off the docks, uh, some clay. Oh, but it's up to her. Now, that is the basic turn structure that we follow throughout this entire game. Um, you know, put stuff on the docks and then do your action, which is either take stuff off the docks or put your worker on a building. And as the more buildings come out, the game gets more and more complex as there's more and more interactions. And um, that should just give you a rough idea of exactly how Laha plays. Now, what I'm going to do here, you will notice at this point, um, buttons are going to appear on the right side of the screen. One that will let you continue to watch me play as I play through a couple more years of the game so you can start seeing some of those more complex interactions. Um, or if you want to push the button in the bottom right corner, you can just jump directly to um, the wrap up where I kind of tell you why this game is arguably the seventh best game in the world. So it's really up to you. Um, click uh, for more uh, gameplay. Or more, or or a wrap up. Your choice. You must decide now. In three, two, one.